The U.S. Surgeon General issued an advisory on youth mental health, which has reached crisis levels. What signs should parents be looking for? What can we all do to help? To give us some guidance, we're joined now by Dr. Curly Bonds, Chief Medical Officer for the Department of Mental Health. Good morning, Dr. Bonds. Good morning. So thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Now, now some young people have been admitting, and this is deeply troubling, to suicidal thoughts. Many adults feel talking about suicide isn't the way to go. What do you think? How, how do you tell parents to get comfortable about this and very important topic? Well, this is a very important issue. And as you mentioned, the Surgeon General put out a report back in December that showed that rates of suicide amongst children and adolescents have been increasing even before the pandemic. And at this point, they're the second leading cause, death by suicide, of folks between the ages of 10 to 24. So I would say it's imperative that we have these conversations although I've realized that parents can often be uncomfortable. It's important to know that suicide generally comes in the face of someone having a mental health problem or a struggle. So I would say it's not a matter of if you should have these conversations, but when. And I would also argue that if you don't talk about this, you have the risk of missing out on mm. warning signs, as you mentioned, that could lead to you being able to prevent a tragedy from happening. Well, let's talk about the warning signs and, and, and tips for struggling teens, because, you know, teens are going to struggle just in general. How do you know the difference? What should you be looking out for? Well, parents know their kids best, and they can look out for changes in the behavior, changes in routines. If children seem to be involuted or withdrawn, not associating with their peers, not interested in their usual activities, that's really important. I would also say that it's important to watch and listen, listen in an open-minded way, because kids will often say things like, I just want to die, or I, I don't feel like going on living anymore, or pretty soon I won't be a burden to you. Those are really big red flags, and we need to listen to those and take them seriously. The, the other types of warning signs that we see are changes in eating or sleeping, if someone is losing weight or if a child just doesn't seem to have an appetite, or they might complain of physical symptoms that don't have any physical basis, like stomach aches, headaches, those sorts of things. And if they fall behind in schoolwork, if a student is normally a very good student and they start slipping in their coursework, that's important. And lastly, if they have a preoccupation with death or dying or talk about that a lot, those are all very big warning signs. And I would think we need to get, as parents, comfortable being uncomfortable talking to our children. Dr. Bonds, thank you so much. Chief Medical Officer for the Department of Mental Health. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.